Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak at the conference here today. Uh, it was a real privilege to talk to you about Agilex. Uh, my name is Tim Stedman. I'm the CEO of uh, Agilex and have been here since uh, the summer of 2020. Prior to that, I've got about 30, 30 years in the chemical industry. So just a quick snapshot to start with in terms of who we are. Um, we're now very much a global company. We started off in the US, but we've been expanding into Europe as really the next stage in the development of the company, which as you can see on the right hand side, now consists of three entities. The Agilex holding company, which is really focused, as you'll see in a moment, on conversion technology. Cyclix, which is our joint venture with ExxonMobil in the area of feedstock and Regenex, which is our joint venture with Amstai, which is our one conversion operating asset. You can see on the left-hand side some of the key partners that we've been working with now over many, many years, developing technology uh, that now is what we are representing to the market today, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. So let me turn to what is it that we are offering to the market um, as Agilex. And what we believe is that what we, we represent is a unique solution for plastics. It's unique because it's integrated. Those words are really, really important. Integrated, what does it mean? It means that we are contemplating the whole cycle from waste plastic through the concept of it being becoming a feedstock to it then becoming a product. We do that through the two go-to-market entities, if you like, listed below, Cyclix. It's all about waste of feedstock, but it's about viewing feedstock as a service. How do we actually make this feasible? Lots of people are looking for how can we use waste plastic as a feedstock, but the existing infrastructure, the existing industries are struggling to do that. So what we bring here is new ways of doing it new supply chains, leveraging consortiums. I'll talk about the scale that that brings to our offering in a few minutes. That then allows us with that scale to start developing custom feedstock supplies. That means that you can do things that are very bespoke to large customers, which means you can drive higher volumes at lower prices. And that then means you've got an offering that can reach the entire market regardless of what plastic they're looking for, what conversion process they're using. And Agilex, the top co, gets remunerated through a royalty model on that. Every ton that goes through Cyclix generates a royalty for Agilex. On the other side, you've got the technology solutions business that actually allows us to take feedstock and offer a really differentiated um, offering in the technology of converting that to a product. This is all about licensing. It's about enabling others to be able to do this. We have core technology that we license. We have specialized equipment that we sell, but our fundamental model here is capital light. What we're doing is allowing others to build assets to be able to convert feedstock to a product. It's extremely robust against the nature of waste plastic. What that means is if I can take more distressed, more dirty, more contaminated waste, then on the other side of the page, Cyclix. Cyclix has much more degrees of freedom to actually go out and source waste as a feedstock for our conversion processes. That means again, that you can open up the operating landscape. You can go after more material at lower cost. What it also means, because our conversion technology solutions are so flexible, is that we are not dependent on specific uh, legislation in any one region. And so we have a global business and we can flex to where things make the most sense and where the opportunities exist. And you're going to see in a few pages the development pipeline and how that now looks and what that, how we're making that a reality. I'm not going to go through all of this page, but we wanted to give you a sense of 
the dynamic nature of the development of these businesses, Cyclix and Agilex, over the past, this is just six months. And I wanted to draw your attention to some of the announcements that are highlighted in the top right hand corner, especially the one around the Cyclix plastic recovery facility. This is a key tangible step that's being taken to the whole concept of Cyclix about driving availability for plastic waste at lower costs. These kind of bespoke systems for dedicated customers is how you go about doing that, or it's a key part of doing that. The other one I wanted to highlight is the announcement we made just the other day about one of our most advanced licensing projects moving into construction. This is incredibly important because for a Toyo Styri, that commitment to move into construction is a very, very significant capital commitment. We've talked about the specialist equipment associated with that generating seven to nine million dollars of revenue. But for them, the total cost of the project is many, many times that. And so after a lot of scrutiny, them saying we're moving into that space is a really crucial endorsement, we believe, of the business model that we're laying out. The last two I wanted to highlight were just Dow and Sabit joining Cyclex. And the reason I wanted to highlight that is because Cyclix now has as its members, amongst its members, I should say, the five biggest producers of plastic in the world. That's Dow, Exxon, Sabic, uh, Lion del Bacel, and Ineos. The five biggest. They are all now part of Cyclix. That is the core of the consortium that we're now building out with many, many others. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do now on this page is really to just give you a flavor for the, you know, how that myriad of announcements that we know that we've been making over the past few years, how does this all fit back together again in terms of the development of the business? And so I'm not going to go through everything here, but this just gives you a journey for through the technology development that the company's been on on the left hand side here between 2004 and 2020. The things that we've done in terms of the different generations, the ability to produce and demonstrate mixed waste plastic pathways, as well as specific plastics like polystyrene. And at the same time, that years of development that allows us to build out this database, which now is forming the part of Cyclix. You know, in the last couple of years, we've done a whole bunch of things that really kind of solidify this early commercialization stage in the middle of the page. And then as you go into the growth, which is where we think we're going in 2022 and beyond, you can see some of the landmarks that we've either already delivered, things like the Toyo construction move, or things that we will be signaling in the coming weeks and months ahead. And you'll see um, that there will be announcements linked to projects going into development, projects going into licensing or construction and technology developments and partnerships, which are so important for how we will grow. The other thing that we've decided to show is a little bit more insight into the fundamental business development pipeline. Again, what we've been doing up till this point is making individual announcements and you know, because you're dealing with other partners, I recognize that sometimes that can be a little bit unclear. We will continue to do uh, some of those announcements for obvious reasons, but what we're also going to do is start giving you a, uh, an update in terms of the fundamental dynamics of the pipeline. And here you can see, you know, the scale of it through pre-development, development and construction and operation. We have increased our Agilex business development pipeline by 50% in the past 12 months. We've got 2,300 tons per day of total potential in there, and it's growing all the time. It's truly global. 19 countries are enca encapsulated within this. So, you know, if legislation in one country goes against us, or even one region, well, okay, fine. We've got plenty of other options that we will go after. And you can see that this is why we are, uh, kind of so convinced about the, the future that we have in terms of growth. If you look on the right hand side, you can see how this today pipeline in tons per day in development and tons per day in operation 
can translate through to what we've said that we're going to be at by 2025, 2026. Now, on this page, I try and do the same thing, but for cyclics. And again, I'm just going to touch on a couple of things here. Cyclics is really being built on that database I mentioned a couple of pages ago. But it goes beyond that because it's not just about the chemical characterization of waste, which is very, very critical, very important. But it's also about how do you then operationalize that? And you have to operationalize that through developing custom supply chains. How do you actually build that capability to understand how to reimagine the current supply chain such that you can see a future of actually massively increasing availability of waste as a feedstock? And you do that by working with partners, the consortium approach. And obviously, having started with ExxonMobil as a, as a kind of founding investor, we are now building that out further and further. And you're going to see more of that. As you look at the early commercialization, things like the custom plastic recovery facility are going to be important. What are we trying to do there? Well, we've defined with somebody a given specification and we could go and refine feedstock and route it to them through third party tollers, but that is a pretty inefficient supply chain. So once you've got the tangible, credible, bankable, and I use that word advisably, bankable offtake from a major party, then what you're able to do is go and do something very specific with them. And that's where you can start building those supply chains into something very tangible, a plastic recovery facility. Now, let's just talk a bit more about membership for a moment, though, first. So I mentioned a couple of things about this before. You can now see on the left hand side here the current membership base. Um, again, really, really exciting that we're getting these big plastic manufacturers in there but also people from other parts of the value chain. People like, as I mentioned before, Casella, Millipore Sigma, Corning, people who are wanting to be part of this reimagined supply chain, either because they have waste that they're wanting to actually be recoverable, uh, recyclable, or they want to be part of the mapping out of the new supply chain and be part of the facilities and the capability that makes it real. But that's a nice story maybe, the question is, is it turning into something tangible? And the answer is yes. Now, I recognize on the right hand side, I haven't given you uh, a scale on here, but that will be coming. Um, but what we are seeing now with our existing customers is a route to scale 7x between what we shipped fourth quarter of last year and where we will be at fourth quarter this year. Now, a big part of that is done by these plastic recovery facilities, because once you've got one of these and it's tied to a guaranteed offtake or a customer like an Exxon, and you've got the capability with the specifications that you understand using the AI tools, and you've got the flows and the agreements from people who've got the waste, this is basically kind of tied in. And it's on the basis of this, that we can both offer what our customers need in terms of guaranteed volume, but also we can take cost out because this can be specific to an individual customer. Because it's an individual credible big blue chip company, it's also extremely financeable. And so although we haven't talked about how we're gonna finance this as yet, it will be underwritten through customer guarantees and that will come out in the coming months. What I want to make very clear is that it will not be financed by Agilex or Cyclix itself. This will be financed by third party financing. So this is the beginning of a process. In the future, we'll be rolling out more of these. Each one will be between four and 120,000 tons per year based on the specific setup, the needs of given customers, et cetera. But this is part of that whole mechanism of reimagining, redefining the supply chain. And it goes into why we are laying out this volume uh, path forward. You can see that the, with our existing customers now, we're upgrading our 25, 26 targets to 650 to 900,000 tons a year. That's up by 100,000 at each end of the range. 
But what actually I get really excited about is that even though we're now flowing volume, even though those midterm targets are really uh, ambitious, even though in 2031 it's huge volumes, we've still only just started. Because in 2031, those volumes that are on this chart represent about 1% of the addressable market. When you look at those numbers there, actually that kind of volume represents about what the chemical industry builds every year in polyethylene. And so, you know, we're just beginning. There is so much opportunity, but we can address the whole market and the five biggest plastics producers in the world are now Cyclix members. So a few things that you're going to see in the coming year from Cyclix, let's start with that feedstock as a service business. You're going to see a step change in volume through Cyclix. You're going to see membership expanding, not just within off takers like Lyondell, like Exxon, but also in across the value chain. We're going to be um, putting a perf into, into operation, but we're going to be developing several more initially in the US, but also extending into the rest of the world. On the conversion technology solutions business, we are sticking at this point in time with our previously communicated guidance of one new project into development on average per quarter before in 2022. We will have three in licensing and construction this year. And we're going to be working with our partners, EPC technology, to leverage their capability to scale up and support rapid growth. Finally, we're going to be looking at a whole area of infrastructure funds and alternative funding mechanisms to support and accelerate our projects into construction. That's something that's very exciting, and we believe there are real opportunities um, over the coming period. Finally, I just wanted to sort of restate our commitment to uplist on the major uh, on the uplist to the uh, main listing of the Oslo Stock Exchange. We said in August last year that we would do that within 12 months, and we are still saying that we're going to do it by that time. So we just wanted to reiterate that commitment. Final page is basically just to reiterate for those of you who may be less familiar with our business, how we actually get our revenue. And we've talked about uh, feedstock as a service, and we've talked about technology uh, conversion solutions. The left-hand side of this is that first bit, it's cyclics. It's about flowing huge volumes of product every year. And basically, as we've talked about, we get paid in Agile X or royalty on every single time that flows through there. That royalty is being estimated by analysts, which is what I'm showing here. We haven't communicated that specifically because of uh, commercial sensitivities. Um, but you get a feel for what is the scale of this and how this can move upwards very, very fast. On the right hand side is the conversion technology solutions, the, the core Angelex conversion business. And there what we've shared previously is that we get paid uh, basically 33 to 40 to 50 million dollars per 100 tons per day of capacity. Half of that approximately comes in construction, which is why that that Toyo construction announcement is so important. Half of it comes through royalties. And again, I've given you an analyst estimate on the EBITDA percentage. We have a very, very healthy pipeline, as I've shared previously, and we continue to see significant growth opportunities for the future. That is the fundamental basis, what I've shared here, to that target of two to three hundred million dollars of revenue for Agilex by 2025, 2026.